Well, hello, YouTubers. Hey, November's been kind of a busy month for me. Uh, deer season's behind me now, and I can start to work on a few walking sticks again and and uh, maybe a few more things. Uh, what I want to share with you today is how I went from this to this. I think you'll like it. So stay with me and don't forget to like and subscribe. First thing I'm going to do is talk to you a little bit about here before I start carving. You look at the profile and you have a nose right here. Well, you look at the front of it and you also have a mouth. But you'd want to cut. I want to demonstrate here. You'd want to... One is, if you want his mouth to be there, you'd want the bottom, base of his nose to maybe be right in there. So you make a little mark right across there. Now, now you know where the bottom of the nose is going to be. So next, you will draw you a center line. And I want to continue right on down his mouth, down that way and right up this way. So I want to establish a center line of the face. So far, pretty easy, right? You got, got the base of his nose, but you want to implement this hole or this knot here where it was as, as a mouth. So you'd, you'd want his nose to come how far above his mouth, right? So, Let's leave the nose where it is, and let's go up now and look and say you want his eyes, a fairly fairly good nose there would be right, uh, so this down, right there to where his, we'll cut his eyes out. Uh, so you want his eyes to be, let's, let's make them slanted this time and let his eyes go up this way. Now this one, his eyes, is going to go about the same. Uh, you look straight into it. And I establish his eyes. You can see that pattern. See that? Now once you do that, you want to go a little bit on each side of the nose. Let me get that on camera if I can. A little bit on each side, say so start right there. And you wanna make a mark that's about the same distance from the, from the center line. A wider nose, uh, you know, is okay. But I'm gonna go right right there now. I've made a, made a little mark at the end of my pen there. Now I want to draw an angle down this way. See that on the side? Coming down right there. And then I want this angle over here to be about the same. So if you look straight into it, you can see where that, that one ends, right in there. But you want to be able to see it as you draw it on and right from the front. Okay, now the nose is kind of established there. You don't want the nose to go straight across, so it's slight, a slight taper now. And go up to the end of that line, and then up to the end of this one. Now then, stick with me, we about got it. Now see that nose I have drawn on there and it's symmetrical from the center line and his eyes are gonna be slightly, uh, slightly uh, angled up, upward. You can go up with his eyes and then down so it'll be a, a startled, more of a startled look if you want. But he's gonna have kind of a mean look here now what I want to do when I start start my uh, grinding or my 
carving, I want to cut deep right, right all the way across this under this line, right on around and all the way across down to Bridgeby's nose too, yes. Go all the way across here and down and up and stop. Actually, the best, I'm going to start there and go in deep. And then we'll go over to this side, start there and come back to deep again. So I'm going to get it kind of even, Stephen, across where he's under his eyebrow. So now that I've done that, I want to come over here and start in that deep part and carve that deep kind of straight in as I can, get that angle straight in, right on that line, and right on that line. Now we've cut across here, down both sides of the nose. Now come over here, cut that out, right down to the tip of his nose, and around and up to the other corner. And it's, but you can do it that way, or you can cut down this way, get it in such a way, then you cut back this way. It's kind of best to keep it symmetrical. Now, you want to look at it. You say, well, that nose already protrudes out there quite a bit. The more you take, the deeper you make this cut, the more his nose is going to stick out. So let's just continue. Uh, go over that again. Cut that a little deeper and deeper and deeper and then go ahead and make this the same depth as what you've got into this. The same depth down. And then you start taking away some of this. As you do that, take away all the way around. Cut this around under his nose to the depth you've got it. All the way around. Now look at the profile and it will be, you'll see a nose sticking out there. So let's get that much of it done first and I'll show you what I mean about the nose sticking out. Uh, the, the, the further an angle that you got here, the further his nose is really going to stick out there. So take as little off of the, just take the bark off the top here. Not much more than that because you want all the nose you can get. And what we'll do is continue to carve till we get the nose sticking out where we want it. And remember, we draw the line so the mouth is going to be continued right in that hole there somewhere. So, well, let's get started on that and see where it takes us. Okay, time to take a look. What I was talking about, you see that, see that nose? See how that's starting to come out and its eyes? You look at the front, you, I don't know the way the light hits it there. Can't see it too much yet. Right there is the basic. If you can get that nose, get that nose shaped, roughed in as good as you want it. But it's got to be popped out away from the face. That's what you're after. I feel like this is a good place to stop point out a few things. The top of his mustache has started to be formed right here. So start keeping that in mind. Cut this way. Take more of this off. Or the deeper you go here, the deeper you go here. And if your mustache is sticking out too far, you can always take some of that off. So there is the profile now of the face that's beginning to show up. So we'll work on that and uh, then stop again to do some explaining. Okay, time for a stop and review. And his upper lip is gone. And that'll all be filled under with this sawdust now. Now what I'll do, I'll just pick up a a pinch of it and put it in there. I take a pencil or anything you got and I want to hold it and I blow it out of the way there. We don't want any more to carve away than we need. I'll tamp that down in there a little bit. Now, 
I'll use the fin today on that. I think that would be appropriate. And and uh, all I do now is I'll put some thin right on and so I'll fill that in just a little bit with sawdust. And I will take this thin glue. We can have it dry immediately with this accelerator. Give it a shot of that. Gotta hit it. Now that'll dry in five seconds. It'd be hard enough to carve right now. But what we're going to do is put on a layer at a time, and then we'll fill that up and make that solid again. That's dried enough right now to, to work it or grind it or whatever you want to do. Did some wood burning on this, and but before we finish that up, put a socket in there and that's for a crystal ball that goes right in the top what we're going to do is taper that right down to where uh, where that ring is right there and then we'll have the hair kind of tapered right into the crystal ball This is kind of a sharp point right around where this dished out area is, and that's where the crystal is going to be. Now all we have to do is cut some more hair lines in here and wood burn it all the way around. So let's get busy on that. For the hair lines and the hairs, what you use is a little slightly cone-shaped burr. What I'm going to do now is tell you what I did. See those lines all up now? We're going to use the, the triangular shape. And if you hold it at a 45 degree angle, it leaves a hairline. I'll take my torch and we'll see what happens there. Now, what we have, you can see the hairline goes all the way down his back like that, and then comes on back up the other side, and then you got hair back to the front. So let's uh, let's get the wood burner going, and we'll see what that looks like. Here's a wood burner that I use. It has, um, I think it's a, I don't know what brand it is. Buy it on Amazon, but uh, I've got it turned up to about. It's over 800 degrees. You can see the end of that, how red it is there. Now, if you touch it down on wood, it gets cold in a hurry because the wood's cold. But what you got to do is just, you can do two ways. You can kind of skimmer over like I'm doing here and get your eyebrows after they're cut in. You don't want to do too much. But um, what I do is you're running it, pushing it up on the eyebrow. That kind of breaks that sharp corner all along. And then you come back down. They get more bushy up into here. And then you want to bring it over the top where it looks sort of even there. Um, okay. See the light? Eyebrows, how they show up all the way around. Anyway, there you go. And we'll go a little bit on the on the, the trailing mustache here. Now, this we want it to match the rest of it, so we got to be careful not to get too dark there. Pretty good on that one. So you want to just come around like I'm doing, and get that touched up, and then we'll go ahead down. I think we got it. Put this up. Now it's in a little uh, cradle there that that's allowed to cool off. But I think we have it now. We have the face burnt all the way around. We got hairs and we got it just like we want it. So now it's ready to go in on the other bench, get the, get the uh, bigger sander out, get all these knobs cut off and that type of thing. So we'll see you in on that other bench. Camera is readjusted now. 
we're ready to cut this knot off right here. Get my face mask cover on here. Positive pressure. Protect yourself from the nasty dust. All right. Ready to go. This is a safety switch on this one where that won't push down accidentally now. But you don't want to trust that if you're going to play, change your uh, change your sander. What you want to do is unplug it and push it down. Okay, we're just finishing up here and we'll take a look now and see that we got it all. Let me turn this around and you see we have the light tan like color for the underbark and a lifted kind of um, longer lines, the same pattern all the way down the stick. And I'm looking now as we go there's a little dark spots there that I might take off right in that twist. And uh, right on down, and I see just very few that I missed. And you go right on down to its head area and finish up. So I'm going to go now and uh, touch those spots up. And then we'll go to the next step, which will be some real light sandpaper. And then we'll go get it finished. Now on my on my pan hand pad here, I got some 240 sandpaper that I'm just going to go over the stick like this, and this is 120 here, and it's probably good enough. But I go over it again like this, just turning it around. Everything's off of it like we want, and I don't want to take any more off than I have to. And then I'll put the final. Final smooth to it. Now with the finishing, I give the whole table here a good a good blow off, get rid of all the all the dust. Compressor comes on, and what we do is wipe this down with a pack cloth, and then we're ready to finish. Okay, here's my entire setup. I've got the stick wiped down with the tacky cloth, and it's uh it's real dry and uh, laying it down on just a paper napkin. That's all I have. And what I do is have a, a V block here. And I'll set it in that V block. Hopefully I can get it to sit there. And it just, just kind of, I can balance it then and the rest of it will stay off the table. Now what I do on my I'm using uh, gloss finish water lux and uh, generally one coat will do it. Now you do use a pair of channel locks when I tighten this back up. I will put a little bit in the, in the shot disposable cup there and I pour back in the can what I have left, but I don't want to uh, waste any of it. I also have a one inch brush that I put it on with. What we'll do first is just start brushing it on. The one last thing I do, I get a, a clean cloth and I go over it one more time, one last time to get, get it perfectly clean. Now you can go over it with a tacky cloth or some alcohol on a clean cloth I sometimes use. Now with this, also, I use a eye bolt in the end to, to hang it all up for dry. So we'll get one of those. I finally got the uh, eye bolt in the end. Now we're ready to finish. So what we're going to do is start at one end and then we'll start just putting on the lux like you're seeing right here. It don't leave any brush marks. Uh, they're not sponsoring me in any way, but uh, 
but I like the stuff. You can get that on Amazon. I don't have any Amazon store or links. You can look it up. It's Waterlux. So go for it if you want. If you're not, um, you know, you can try any kind of polyurethane. I use that a lot. Polyurethane finishes. Then I'm going to hang it up in the back room. And tomorrow, we will see see what it looks like. But make sure you got all the cracks and crevices covered. Takes a while to get it in all the little hairs down in the grooves and what have you. But uh, this is going to be a pretty nice stick. Now the trouble is, a lot of people have inquired about purchasing these sticks. But so far, I haven't found a way to mail them to make them affordable. It's only kind of the length versus the, the weight. The weight is not too bad. It's the length that runs the cost up. And depending on where you live in the United States, it's all the way from $75, the cheapest I can do, to $150. And um, it's, I found on my website, people are not willing to pay that kind of postage, but that's the only way you can get one. So I may put some on, on my website, but just get ready to pay more for postage. Now, if I added the postage into the price, I could do that, but that would be misleading. Everybody would say, ah, he wants too much for his sticks. Actually, I'll sell these sticks out the door and at craft shows for between $100 and $150 each. So, um, if you're coming to Dexter, Missouri, you can call me in advance or drop me in the comments and uh, let me know what time you're coming by. I don't have a store. It would just be at my shop, at my home. And uh, I occasionally have someone walk in and purchase that way. I think we'll go back and put that up because got a little bit more to do and this is not a dust-free environment here which is the back in the drying room. I have some wires hanging down. I can hang it up. I don't have to worry about scattering, picking up any dust in here. So I think we'll go back there right now and get that done. And uh, we'll see you in the morning. Well, we're back after the next morning. Yesterday, we put the water lux on this, on this stick. And you can see how it looks now. And it feels just, it's pretty smooth, but all I do is take a piece of 400 grit sandpaper and get your favorite hold on it. You don't have to press in or nothing, but this is all I do. What I do is take this 400 grit sandpaper, but I just very lightly go over it like this and, and, and I'm really pretty much done with it as far as the finish. Now, and that's live, I'm not taking <clears throat> any of the time out of it. And now it is very slick. I'll tell you, stay tuned because interestingly, you know, I cut the radius out in here to fit this ball. And I'm gonna show you how to mount this crystal right in the top of this guy's head. Okay, now we're gonna go through the steps on how to attach this resin ball to the top of my little man here. Now you have to have a hole that will fit into the top of your head and stick out just enough for the distance the reset you have on your on your pen or on your ball. So how you do that is now what I do is drill a pilot hole first as close to the center as you can get it, but take your half inch dowel and you put it in there and then and then we take a pen and mark around it a pencil. Make your pencil mark. Now that's set in there. No glue, no nothing. Now you got a pencil mark and you got the dowel in there. 
Now pull it out and then bring it over and put it in your crystal. That way you can see how much has to be sanded off of one side. You want it down to that mark that you just made. So you have to take it to hold it with uh, by scripts or whatever you want to do. Uh, anyway, get that sanded down then to where up to where your mark is buried in there. Now you know that that the ball will rest all the way down in there and touch this wood all the way around. Now you're ready to epoxy everything in place. So let's get started and I'll show you the rest of that process as I do it. First I get two parts laid out here. Make the puddles about the same size. Get you an ice cream popsicle stick. But anyway, you mix that epoxy up real good. And what you do is lay your stick upside down so it don't run out of the hole on you. Okay, now here, here's the top of the stick. I got some epoxy and I'll put it right on the top of it. I'm gonna make sure I get me some all around that little socket that we have. Now what I wanna do is take this. Now I wanna shove it down in that hole. Now I've got the crystal. All I have to do is, now your hole might not have been dead center. Yeah, and no, it just fell right in place. Now you turn your crystal to where, you look around the edge of it to where it's fitting now. Pretty nice sitting in there and it's embedded right up to where it belongs. And if I'm looking at it this way down inside, you cannot see that dowel protruding through the top. The clear ones, you don't want that, if you don't want it to show through, mold it with, with a round, it's gonna be a quarter inch, three eighths, whatever dowel you want. But I happen to have some half inch dowels and they work just fine. I'm gonna prop this stick up kind of an upright position and leave it there for 10 or 15 minutes will be plenty. So let's uh, get that done and we'll take a closer look over all of this stick. Now we're gonna put a paracord through here for the handle and we'll be done. Well, that's about it for this video. Uh, you see that it's about chin high. And as you all know, I haven't put out a video in about three or four weeks. And uh, that's been a cause of the big deer season up here in Missouri, and I'm a deer hunter, so I'm in the woods with a bow a little while and gun a little while and this and that, and I go out there and, uh, around the campfire and sit and wait on a deer to come through. But um, anyway, I've been busy deer hunting, uh, enjoying life, and uh, I have missed uh, a few uh, Sundays getting a uh, video ready to go out. So hopefully this one is uh, one you've been waiting on and uh, we'll, we'll see. Has that crystal ball right in the top of it. That is made of resin, but it looks like crystal and it's uh, a lot of reflection in there. Uh, other than that, I appreciate every one of you, especially my subscribers, my viewers, whether you subscribe or not, maybe someday you'll decide to. And, uh, I'll tell you what, about all I can say now is just, I'll see you in the next video.